A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate, Charles Mongo Shampagi. And tonight we'll be discussing the opposition and particularly uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besige, former presidential candidate, announced earlier in the week, actually last week, that they will be launching another effort to challenge our government, which is the campaign called Tuvale Mese, arising out of last year's uh, Red Ribbon campaign and other initiatives that have emerged before. We'll be taking an audit of can it work this time, or is it another, as what some people have called it, sloganeering. We'll also, of course, discuss a little bit of uh, what has upset, especially the African continent and the world. President Donald Trump comes out with those famous one-liners. <coughs> Why should we be accepting immigrants from these shithole countries? That's the word he used. I have seen um, a, a very interesting video this afternoon, uh, th this evening actually, from um, Trevor Noah uh, with uh, those one-liners from uh, President Donald uh, Trump praising himself and former Ugandan President Idi Amin Dada. It's really uh, hilarious uh, to look at it, but we were asking some questions around that as well. Um, the panel tonight, let me start with Robbie Kakonge. Robbie making a return after uh, appearing last week. Very nice to have you here. Likewise. Robbie is a communication um, expert, communication media expert. Uh, I hope that's the correct uh, introduction I should have for you. Very nice to have you. Also making a return, Onapite Komoloit has been missing uh, after the Christmas and New Year holidays. Ona, very nice to have you. Good evening, Charles. Nice to be back. You had an extended um, holiday. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I took a sabbatical. As to, to think and reflect for the country, I hope. I will try to explain as we go along. Okay. Leah <laughs> uh, Erienu. Leah is also making a return uh, after appearing last week. Leah is a social uh, commentator and activist. Leah, very nice to have you. Uh, thank you for having me, Charles. And I'm very intimidated to be seated <laughs> next to the good doctor. <laughs> intimidated? Yes. That's, that's a strong word. <laughs> and of course, Retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Bessiger himself uh, making appearance on the Fourth Estate. <coughs> Dr. Very nice to have you on the Fourth Estate tonight. Thank you very much and a uh, very good evening to all the viewers and listeners out there. Dr. I want to start straight with you and ask the question. You held a press conference earlier in the week and announced the Tuvale Mesa campaign. We're discussing that same issue on uh, another show um, uh, on uh, the Friday panel on KFM. Uh, it, and we're saying Tuvale Mese and Kule Mesa is a word President Museven has loved for long. Uh, he always speaks about it. Uh, what's different about Tuvale Mese and what are you going to do? Wh where can it take you? Well, first of all, uh, this is not a campaign for me. It's a campaign for Ugandans. And those who think it's worthwhile will definitely engage with it. And those who don't think it's worthwhile will not, should, should not pay any attention. And the background to it is indeed uh, in what happened at the close of last year. When we saw, I think every person, even the most casual observer in this country must have witnessed the country thinking in one way regarding its governance and the constitution and some few people thinking and deciding in a particular way and not just deciding in a particular way but doing so with violence because we witnessed our parliament you know surrounded by Amendments uh, invaded by people still unknown. Uh, the, the Speaker of Parliament herself wrote a letter inquiring into who had attacked Parliament. The people that attacked Parliament coming from the President's office are still unknown who they are, who sent them, what their mission was. But clearly, very violent, beat up members of Parliament, some of whom were, you know, seriously injured and treated outside, and eventually, uh, you know, 
the decision that was made. But even before that decision, I think the country witnessed, you know, how it was procured, the whole process of procuring it. Members of parliament who were officially commissioned to go and uh, consult were themselves violently attacked, beaten, and uh, dispersed uh, in broad daylight, while others were being protected and, uh, <clears throat> you know. So, the background to what we uh, communicated this ending week was that we are in a country which is controlled by a few people using coercive forces. Mm -hmm. We are in a hostage state. And this hostage state is not a new state where few people make decisions on behalf of many and decisions that have far-reaching implications. Decisions, of course, the most important decision that is being made in our country is through elections. That's where people make participate to make important decisions on who leads them and how they are led. We know that we have never changed a leader through an election. Every leader that has led this country comes through force. So it is force that mediates change, political change, not people. And that is the situation that we have to contend with as a country, that we are a hostage country. We have people that, uh, few people that make decisions, that control institutions, that all institutions are controlled by these people. They are not institutions of the people, they are institutions of the regime that we have resources that are controlled, monopolized, and used for the benefit of the few. And so, and you know, some people think that what I am saying is not the case. Mm -hmm. There are some people who think we are a democratic country, everybody has freedom, everybody participates in making a decision. So that is for every Ugandan to make a judgment on. The place where you come from to make these statements is very well known. So the question is, if we are a country that is controlled by gunmen, that no leader has ever taken leadership except using guns, that constitutions come with leaders and go with them. The 1995 constitution, the preamble was that this particular constitution was to immunize the country against that, that this constitution was intended to establish political and constitutional stability. And the provisions through which that was to be achieved were the two provisions that have already been knocked down when they inconvenienced one individual that holds the country to ransom. So the question is, if we are held hostage by those with guns, how do we free ourselves so that we have equal influence in the country and that the country serves us equally? And that is the strategy, therefore, of uh, procuring change. Yes. Uh, and, uh, the, and that strategy... Can, can I just cut in there? Uh, but you, uh, I'll, and, uh, I'll let you uh, finish your uh, train of thought there. The question is, is this actually guided by strategy? What's different about Tuvalu MSA from the others? Yeah, so, was... so, so that's where I yes. have just reached, that mm -hmm. the question is, we have to change power from being controlled by a few to being controlled by the majority of the people in this country. And the question is, what strategy therefore do you use to regain power from the gunmen? And that's where, you know, there has been a misunderstanding. And, and there are three broad strategies that I can talk to. Mm -hmm. The first one, which is what has failed, is using elections. That people can regularly go, cast votes, and choose their leaders and choose how they will be led. Mm. The reason that cannot function is because, as I have told you first, the institutions that mediate political processes are controlled by those with guns. Mm -hmm. And so you will not have a free process. So people cannot express themselves freely. Through an election. The, 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 the institutions that mediate, that manage electoral processes cannot manage 
in a, a free, in, in an open and transparent and fair way. So elections have failed since independence mm -hmm. to have free and fair elections. You cannot have free and fair elections unless actually you have freedom. Mm -hmm. That's the first, the starting point. If there is no freedom for everybody, you can't have free elections. And some people still think mm. that even what we have today, a military dictatorship, which is the essential element of it, Mr. Museveni was brought into office by the military. The declaration in 1986 was that we, the National Resistance Army, on this day take the power of state of government. It was the National Resistance Army mm -hmm. and vest it in the National Resistance Movement. And that uh, taking of power by guns is what cannot be changed by just casting a vote. And Mr. Seven has been candid about this, uh, 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 I, saying I, that a piece I, of I, paper I, 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 cannot I, I, remove it. Yes, I hear you so, that, so that yes. is one of the strategies. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to some of the people who have been talking on these things, some say we have failed to get change through elections because we are not doing the right things that would cause change through elections. We are not organizing grassroots structures. We are not providing alternative uh, policy agenda that uh, can attract people to support us. We are not, um, uh, you know, convincing people uh, through, uh, you know, uh, uh, influence, sufficiently influencing the formation of political will. Those are the very things that cannot happen when there is no freedom. So as long as there is no freedom, elections in and of themselves, I, I, if you ask I hear me, you. I, yes. I, elections I, 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 in I, I, and of themselves will not cause change. Yes. And indeed, the person who knows that best is Mr. Museveni. Yes, because that's I, why, I, I because hear you that's on why that. he took I, guns. Yes, I, I want to bring in the other uh, panelists. But yes, I, I, I so, hear you so on let that. Me, and let's, so let me just conclude on what happened this week. So what happened this week is, those of us who believe the military regime, the military dictatorship we have, cannot be changed just by elections in and of themselves. We believe that there must be struggle. And the struggle takes two main strands. You either have violent struggle, armed struggle, like Mr. Museven did. Mm -hmm. You take up guns and fight with the other guns. Or you use the people, the power in the numbers of people to overcome the power Thank of you. those with guns. Let, so let, that, that non-violent popular struggle is what we have chosen as a strategy. Okay. Thank you. And the, and the Kubale Mesa, the way the majority of people, Kule Mesa, mm -hmm. stop the other people who have guns from continuing to do what they want, is through either boycotting what they, they do, or through um, uh, expressing themselves in a manner that will weaken those who have uh, guns and make them fail. And so there are mechanisms that have been used. We are not in inventing them here. So Kubale Mesa is something that is not just done by those of us, but I, every Ugandan, wherever they are, yes. who believe I, I, that the I, 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 I hear you perfectly, and people have been debating since you held the press conference and announced that. The question is, is this a strategy that can work? Well, why, why, well, why would it? I, I want to draw other uh, panelists yeah. into the discussion. Uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, I want to start with you, Robbie. Do you think this is a strategy that can work? Charles, one of the things that um, you've mentioned in terms of the media hmm, and covering the opposition and covering politics in this country is that the opposition was able to take the center stage in advocating for change. This was years ago. But then in that sequence, you get there, you take center stage, and then what happens? It just seems like every other time it's a slogan, every other time, it's, it's start, stop, and go. Start, stop, and go. So therefore, the question still remains, Dr. Vesiji, in that in this process, 
with the Ugandans, with the uh, Tuwale Mese. Hmm? What is different? How are things going to be different mm -hmm. in terms, because it's, is it different because last time it was blue, now people are wearing uh, red and tomorrow will they wear yellow so that they also kule it, it The whole, Ugandans are, are very, they're very keen in talking politics, in looking at politics. But sometimes there's a bit of a challenge when there's this notion that the people with the guns, especially given that some of the people in the opposition were a part of the people with the guns. So it, you, it's got to be crystal clear in essence, in what Charles was saying. And I think after all this time, the question still remains, what are the objectives? What has been accomplished? And even within the opposition itself, are some of those people with you in this struggle? Are they advocating for these things? Or is that, or is there, it, it, even that uh, walk is not complete? Thank you. Mm. Uh, I, I, I did, w w let, let's all make a <coughs> contribution and then we, we can have him respond <coughs> at once. Uh, Ona, uh, people have been mm. picking. Um, mm. I think one of the cartoonists in one of the newspapers uh, drew uh, Dr. Besige on a typewriter with a long roll of paper mm -hmm. throwing off one slogan after another mm -hmm. after another and saying what will the next one be and the people have been asking the timing of the particular slogan mm -hmm. the naming of that slogan and actual mobilization work that can deliver when you come mm -hmm. to the message well Charles at least you must give Dr. Vesje credit for not being a quitter, even when most people think <laughs> it's impossible. And increasingly, though, is more a subject of pity than uh, perhaps hate by those who, who don't agree with the, his uh, strategy. He has articulated the strategy of people power. But I think the most important thing that any strategy must be, must first start with situation analysis. And he kind of does that, but I think the real special analysis that is missing here is trying to understand the people in Uganda that he hopes will rise and challenge the armed group. I don't see in the history of Uganda since uh, before independence that tendency. There have been military coups, there have been guerrilla wars, which are real about armed and armed groups facing each other, and sometimes in one group in hiding in case of a girl, but mm. the culture of open defiance without arms, I've not seen it in Uganda. It's largely a submissive society. You can't even compare it with Kenya, where we see time and again people going on the street and challenging governments and sort of causing change. So uh, the crisis is that we're almost witnessing what they say. People get the government they deserve. Mm. Time and again, Dr. Vesja and his group tell us, your room seven has finally crossed the red line. They lifted a uh, term limit. This age limit was supposed to be it. Toji Kwatako. Everyone thought it can't happen. Not only does it happen, parliament even extends mm. the term from easily from five to seven years. So clearly the population is not in sync with the opposition. They, they kind of are ready to leave. And maybe you must give credit to your room seven that he has created a certain level of comfort that allows people to say, well, we comfort can... Comfort or despondency? Well, despondency hmm, and comfort. Because in many societies, they have reached a critical <coughs> point. Maybe the Ugandans have not reached a critical point. Because look at a situation like Zimbabwe. The economy was really seen to be in, in shambles. In shambles. Here the economy, you can argue, is not the best, but people get by. So the, there is a crisis for the opposition whereby, on one hand, they are dealing with a tricky customer in the person of Yorim Seveni, whom Dr. Besige knows. is not, <laughs> not someone who really doesn't know what he's doing in many respects. And then you are dealing with the population, which sort of encourages them. But when it comes to the critical point, 
remember during the last election, there was a belief that this time, when the election is stolen, people are going to rise. We waited and did not happen. So are the people whom you expect to rise really uncomfortable enough to rise? I don't think they are. L let's hear from Lee. Uh, <coughs> Le um, um, you, you have had close to, I, I don't know how the assessment has been done, but close to successful people uprisings in the way Dr. Kizabesh talked about, talk, talks about it. The first you had was in 2007, over the giveaway of Mavira Forest. Many analysts think that was successful people rising to challenge government where they felt passionate. There was no WhatsApp at that time. People mobilized each other through SMS. And people put in their own money to mobilize for. But that was a different kind of agitation. The other one you come close is 2009, when the Kavaka was stopped from going to Kayunga. But that ran for less than 10 days, and it petered out. Then you had a little bit more sustained walk to work 2011. 2011 walk to work is riding off the Arab Spring. So there's a lot of anticipation that because you've had, you, you've had the Arab Spring in northern Uganda, I, I mean in, uh, in North Africa, in, in uh, Tunisia, in uh, Egypt, uh, you, you had it a bit in Yemen, which has not yet uh, settled. Um, that was an offshoot that created Syria, what we mm. have in Syria today. You had it in uh, Libya. But you, cannot, you have not had sustained Ugandans going on the street to demand, either to boycott or to be on the street. Where does a campaign like Tuvalu Mesa fit in? Okay, uh, <coughs> I'll preface that answer by saying that, you know, I too um, appreciate the efforts um, of the opposition um, in trying to um, to get rid of this government under which many of us were born. Um, and uh, Onapito mentioned, and, and Dr. Besige also mentioned, that the strategy is about people power. And yet I feel that that's actually the, the key ingredient that's missing from, from this Tuvalu Mese campaign. Uh, number one, because I felt, I feel that the interests of the people, which is actually present in all the other uprisings across the, across the world, in the, in the Arab world, and also here, however short-lived they were, the people's interests were captured in those mini revolutions. The issue had become personal. And so that is why people were willing to risk their lives and go out and fight for what they believed in. But when you, you look very critically at this campaign, uh, one of the things that I really appreciate was the issue that the MPs that voted yes have to be shunned. But then the issue that I felt was very tone deaf and very elitist is the issue of economic boycott. In a country such as Uganda, where most people, the majority of people are languishing in poverty, you cannot make a choice to not shop at a certain shop because that's the only shop that's there. Um, and also because of the lack of information. We do not have access to information. We don't know who owns what. And also, to even frustrate us further, actually the state machinery has their fingers in almost everything. So the difference between um, the other uprisings and the ones that we've had is that the other ones were more personal and they were able to be sustained because then they eventually, almost all of them got the military on their side. And that's the only, the, that, is, uh, has, that has not happened in the case of Uganda. Uh, uh, all the uprisings, however peaceful, they, however peaceful they started out, were met uh, with the utmost repression. And so that is why they were never sustained. Uh, I think the thing, the uprising, actually that's, that's too big a word, uh, civil disobedience, civil disobedience mm -hmm. that I felt resonated with people the most uh, was the one uh, uh, on walk to work because that was talking about the economic malaise that everybody was facing. Um, but there's, there, there's a certain fatigue that has settled in. When Tubalemese, uh, when Dr. Besije came to announce Tubalemese, I felt that it was received with a lot of disillusionment there was you know it was more of the same it was the same strategy with the same faces no no offense to you dr bessie j um but you know we've seen your face every time and 
I, I, for me, it was very particular to uh, how that press conference was even held. Dr. Bessiger is the de facto leader of the opposition, mm -hmm. even if he does not hold an official office. And the leader of FDC was actually to the extreme of the table. I thought that perhaps he should be the one announcing the, <laughs> the Tuvalu <laughs> Minister. <laughs> since, <laughs> since at least he actually officially holds office. And this is not in any way to minimize the contribution that Dr. Bessige has made to the growth of the opposition or even to the growth of the FDC. But his face and his reputation casts a long shadow, such that he overshadows everything. So, um, but we've also seen that when the opposition comes together, you know, and they think critically, and perhaps sometimes without the good doctor's input, you know, people can get galvanized. Look, look at Toji Kwatako. That mm. actually originated from FDC. At least that's what I think. Mm. No, DP. Oh, no, oh, uh, rather, it's DP. From DP. Excuse mm. me. That's mm. what I meant to say. Mm. From DP. And it galvanized <coughs> the people. And it had new faces. And I think people were excited about that. Uh, so because Dr. Bessage, however great his ideas are, because we keep seeing his face, yes, then sometimes there is a feeling that oh, this is more, more or less the same thing. So I felt that, um, that the campaign was in some regard dead on arrival. Okay. Can we yeah. take a quick commercial break and then Dr. Bessie will respond? Because the, the many issues that have been raised by the panelists, uh, which you need to respond to and give us direction. Is this something new? What is new about it? And, and can you actually finally deliver on it? <coughs> or, or it's another slogan after a very quick commercial break. Welcome back to this edition of the Fourth Estate and we're discussing is it another slogan, Tubale Mese? And Dr. Kizabesji announced it, is here to answer those questions. Dr. Besiji, you listen to the other panelists, and the long and short of it is basically to many people you're not putting on the table anything new. Yes, possibly I think there is no strategy behind it. I think I think uh, yes. what these panelists said hmm. crystallizes the problem that we actually have which is a problem of leadership. Because, you know, and this is a fundamental problem with the Ugandan elite. They indeed, like Konapito said, would like to be commentators, not step forward, offer direction, and lead people into action. You had all of them were, you know, raising questions, raising doubts, but nobody saying, no, I think in what you have said, this is not the right strategy. Let's do this. If we did this, it would serve better than what you are saying. It does not help to say what you are doing is the same that mm -hmm. you have been doing. When you are not producing any suggestion that is different, you know? And as I have told you, in terms of strategy, I consider that there are three main strategies that one can consider in removing an entrenched military dictator. And the three I have told you, actually there are two. One is the election, which I said to my mind, does not function. No election has removed an entrenched military dictator anywhere. Just election organized by the dictator. The other one is struggle. And in struggle there are two strands. Either violent struggle, like Museven conducted, or non-violent struggle. You can tell us a fourth one, and we shall entertain it, and interrogate it, and it may excite Ugandans. What we are telling Ugandans day in, day out, and we shall tell it to them for the next 50 years if nothing has happened, is that our choice of strategy is non-violent struggle. Non-violent struggle entails three things. Mm -hmm. One, people must have the necessary understanding the awakening, the political awakening to the situation in which they live and how they can get out of it. So the first, st the first step in any conduct of nonviolent struggle is awakening, con conscientizing the population. And that is through 
programs like this, talking to people, but, 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 but holding but, meetings but, 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 at, at different yes, levels. Oh, oh, going oh, oh, to hold it a moment. Yes. We're not <laughs> discussing a new innovation here. We're discussing a struggle you've been involved in for the last so many years. Yes, the question... We are discussing the different initiatives or the different strategies you've put forth before. What kind of stock taking have you done to say, walk to work started here, well, I will, I will, I will come to that. I will come, I will come to that is one of the things that was raised. Mm. If you leave me alone, I will actually get to them. <laughs> no, no, I cannot because, leave you alone. I will not because actually. you are repeating what has been yes, raised. Yes, yes. What is the progress mm -hmm. along this struggle? Mm -hmm. Have we made any headway? That has already been raised. So if you ask it again, it doesn't mm -hmm. add. So first thing I was saying is, these are the strategies of how you can start from A to Z. First of all, the end result which we want as I have said, is where power shifts, not from one individual to another, but from control by a few people to popular control. And that is precisely why, actually, we opt not to use armed struggle. Because armed struggle can defeat the other armed men, like we did when we went to Ruero, we defeated the forces of Tito Kelo and uh, the, the Milton Obote who were there then. But what happened was that the new forces cannot be tamed by the population. They become the new problem. So you have one force. In fact, what I'm saying say that the, those steps of parliament, that this is not a, a change of guard. That is exactly what it was. One a set of guards going out and another guard that the population cannot control coming in. So that's, but otherwise, that strategy can defeat the armed men. Because you have the population behind you, you can, and like he did with few guns, you can build and defeat this one. But you won't get to the strategic goal which we want, which is changing the locus of power. Dr. BSJ, the risk of interrupting you, you're talking about want, what you want. Yes. But in the process of what you want, yes. how are you planning for what you want? And what we're saying is that when you've got a population that's saying, Sebe government to Yambi. So, and on the other hand, you're saying to Baleme, say, these same people, are you going to claim say these same people yes. who are asking the government, but to Yambi? Yes, so I have told you mm. that first, the first thing is to identify the goal. The strategic goal is shifting power. The second thing is the strat strategy. The strategy we have chosen is non-violent struggle. What do we do under an unviolent struggle is what I was telling you, three things. The first one is awakening. So that first of all, the mindset of the people who say government to Yambe changes. And he knows he's the one who has to do the, the, the hard work. When we started this struggle, people were telling us, fight for us. We are praying for you. Carry on. Don't lose hope. <laughs> you know, they were not seeing them, they were not seeing themselves as part of the struggle. They were just, you know, prompting you to go on and fight for them. That has changed tremendously. And if one was following what happened in 2016, I'm sure you saw what has never happened in this country. That I moved throughout the whole country, getting money from Ugandans, supporting change to happen. I, 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 I but, hear but, you. But the, the same, but the same, but the same Ugandans, yes. you see, thereafter, your victory was stolen. So, and, the, and the same Ugandans stood by to this day. Yeah, so go step by step. Mm. That is a transformation. You're asking, have we made any headway? That is practical. So, so we, I go back they, to my point. They are happy to give you the money I to am fight, I am but they coming, are not willing I'm to coming, fight I'm coming, with you. I'm coming. I told you there are three mm. steps. The first one is conscientization. Mm. And I believe we have gone a long way. People now know that it's not just the BCJ and Rukwago and a few people. They know that everybody has a role. And those who have not known, it continues to be our responsibility or the responsibility of those who know, wherever they are, to, get, to make sure that every Ugandan knows that they have to have a stake in the changes that it's, it's not a person thing. Now, the second step, having people knowing what needs to be done, is to give them organizational competencies. Because for people's power to be effective, mm -hmm. they have to have the competence to act together, which is what you're asking. 
for them to come together and agitate together. It's not mm -hmm. one group uh, coming up and others remaining sleeping. And uh, They have to be that organizational competence. That too is a process that takes a bit of time. And I am really surprised, especially at you, Nugona uh, Pito, because mm -hmm. I think you have some, you know, background of history, <coughs> to say that in Uganda we have never had this. How did we get independence? We did not actually go to fight like Kenya did. It was boycotts. It was actually people organizing non-violent struggle. It was non-violent struggle that forced the British out of this country by the Kagwas and so on, which, which is very well documented. So it is possible. It has happened even in our own country for non-violent struggle to cause change. Now, I was talking about the second stage, mm -hmm. organizational competencies. That takes time too. If at the last election, the way people were conscious, the way people responded, if they had been equally organized and led. Now, organization is about leadership. This is why I say that our crisis is a crisis of leadership and not, nothing else. And, and, and organization and, is about creating a network of leaders. And those are the people that are a problem. Whoever comes up, next day you hear they have been called to Kihura's office and the next day they are talking to Sam Rubicha. I hear you. That, 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 that is where the problem. That is where the problem is. You've been on this journey since effectively 2001. Even before. It's yes, the okay, journey that even took me yes, to the bush. It took you to the bush. Now, but we assess Dr. Kizabesji as an opposition leader from 2001 to date. And right. you're talking about building organizational competence. And the question that is running around the table, and you'll hear on the street, is people asking, how long must they wait for that organizational you, competence you to be built? And, and uh, let, let me put another question. Mm. You said people need conscientization. Well, I'm good. People told you, struggle on, struggle for us. Mm. Now, what you'll find on the street are people saying, do we really want this? Will this really work? for us. You Can see, they leave us have some peace? Because if you, you, see, you see, you see, let me tell you. Yeah. There, as I've told you, there are two types of people. There are the people at the bottom mm -hmm. who have nothing to lose, who are determined to do anything, and their frustration is us, the leaders. Because people at the end of the day mm -hmm. will it will take them a longer time. They will do it eventually. They will do it. They will organize themselves even without our input. If we continue being the nuisance we are as elites, people have in other countries indeed organized themselves. Peasant revolutions have happened. Peasants can stand up and throw every one of us to the sea. So the, the question is how long it or how effective it is to, to, to do what needs to be done. And that's where the challenge comes to the commentators. You know, you messages, you have failed. Well, okay, we have failed. But does, has Bessage stopped? <laughs> Any person mm. coming out and doing what needs to be done. Because you see, you hear even some people, very, very disturbing, saying Bessage and Museven are the same. Bessage mm. has refused to leave opposition leadership, Museven has refused to leave government leadership. Mm. The reason Museven holds on to government leadership mm. is because of known factors, guns, state money, which he uses, as I have told you, to bribe everybody, control of media so that people don't get the information you need. What does Besije use mm. to maintain <coughs> control in the opposition. But so absolutely, 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 absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Is there, absolutely nothing. Is there, is there no Dr. merit Dr. To, Dr. That, to that critique that so tell me. since you're there all the time, yes. and even if you're not actually holding the office um, uh, officially, because of your reputation, because of, because of the... The, the respect and the deference that they have so, for you... So in order, for, so in order the, for another leader to come up, you are suggesting... BCJ should just go and hide. No. Stop struggling. Absolutely. So that no. another leader comes up. Because <laughs> tell me otherwise, I what mean. it is that I have that stops any person coming up to. How did I come up? When the opposition leaders, when I came up, 
I think that were they opposition leaders? Were they not? I came up actually from government. I think from what I'm trying to struggle. say specifically, yes. what I'm trying to say specifically, let me let me just use an example of Obama, who's mm. a very charismatic man, and if he never went away, then he would never go away because then he's being held up um, as that kind of savior. And I feel that a lot of people look at you that way, such that even if there is another leader that has come up that is charismatic, but as long as you're sharing a table with them, the attention is always going so, to be on you. So, I so, think, so, I think that is, mm. so for me, the solution would be, as a young person that looks up to you, mm. actually, mm. the solution would mm. be for you to, to focus on the behind the scenes um, organizing and just come out once in a while and give inspirational speeches because first of all even your very presence sometimes proves to be a distraction because then the police are going to come out and then sometimes when the organizing is much smaller then everything is smooth sailing but, first but of this all, is with great appreciation mm. um, <laughs> for all the work that you've done mm. but I feel that you cast a long shadow it, it will be the equivalent of Nelson Mandela saying I have retired from active office but then every, every so often coming to share the lectern with Tabo and Becky. I but think they, that's, this that's, 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 that's the thing also. With younger people, let's, let's, let's with younger people sometimes there's this tendency to try and push you know, older leaders off the stage. Dr. Visage is on the stage. Now whether he's behind or in front or on the stage, he's, he's part and parcel of this thing. You talked about um, reputation. You know? Now my question is, at the end of the day, you and Museveni may be the same. Hmm? And in, th in this regard, you're both gurus. Now, is he going to be seen as the guru of peace? And are you willing to be seen as the guru of resistance? But to, that, to what extent and what will this resistance yield? Because when you went to the bush, it was what, five years? You mentioned mm -hmm. 201, here we are, 2018. So with, with but this let me ask, <coughs> in 2001, <coughs> I fled Uganda. I stayed away for four years. I came back in 2005, end of 2005. Mm -hmm. How was I casting a shadow? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here now. <laughs> you, know, you know, tell me. You know, here, you know, you are saying I'm always here. I go away actually for some time. I go away. <laughs> I go away and, and you hear what you what do you hear? Basiji Yalagawa. Why, why is he quiet? I think I think I think I have I just wanted us to return. Have you also been bold? I want to return to Dr. Basiji's concern. Before you return to Dr. Basiji's concern, I wanted Dr. Basiji to respond to what Robbie said. Are you comfortable? having Museveni characterized as the guru of peace and you as the guru of resistance? Well, I don't know who would ever characterize Museveni as a guru of peace. Hmm. How would that arise? One of the biggest things is like peace and uh, stability, not just in Uganda, but within, okay. within the region. That's that there is stability and peace within the region. His contribution towards peace and stability. Is there if peace you know, and stability in the region? Dr. Besige, when you came with him and mm. when you came here, mm. were you not part of the group that brought peace and stability to Uganda? Yes, but okay. is there peace and that, stability uh, in the region? You've because the peace mm. you are talking about was very transitory mm. and limited. But that's what because the people don't remember. Because that even when Uganda was talked about to have generally the peace, there was war for 20 oh, yes, years yes. in northern okay. Uganda. There was war in eastern Uganda. There was war in western but, Uganda. But, but so the, so but I, don't see, I don't see how you would want to characterize in 2018 that in my comfort was even being characterized as a guru of peace. I mean, I don't know whether anybody would ever be comfortable with such a thing considering what is... Uh, going around. Now, whether I would like to be characterized as a guru of resistance, I, I wouldn't like to be a guru of anything. And resistance is not something, you know, just to be proud of. What we all would want to see happen mm -hmm. is that regardless of who does what, there is a shift from uh, control of us as citizens and our resources and abuse of it and so on to a situation where there is democratic control okay. accountability thank you mm -hmm. now the question okay. what we are engaged with and i'm i'm, I'm rather 
uh, you know, uh, uncomfortable that you throw many things, but you don't give me time. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I have one particular problem, Dr. Bessiger, that uh, your answers are long. And someone sent a message and said, your first, the first interaction between me and you took 20 minutes. Mm. So, and we only have about one and a half hours to get this Well, all, so. all of them asking. No, 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 you, citizen I want we don't have, have a business that is we are approach. critiquing you are you are you are an opposition leader you have come up with a strategy and this di this discussion is about critiquing your strategy such yes. that you can respond to critiquing it. involves saying there is this one so i'm you saying that this one for example you are harping on the fact that it will take people to rise yes and you are trying to encourage people to rise yes in the last election, you had P10, which was supposed to be people's groupings to rise mm. if need be. After the elections, have you gone back to them and challenged them, why didn't you rise? I think this is one of the problems for all politicians during elections. So you are suggesting yes, I haven't? Please, yes, hold on. Mm. Because I am not aware you can say that you have gone <laughs> yeah. and they have told you why they didn't rise. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the politics world over, unfortunately, is about what the leaders like you think is the right thing it is never directly what the people think is the right thing so in terms of this strategy of people rising you can educate us how you have gone across the country and the people have told you why they didn't rise again is what you say was a stolen victory and why they will now rise again is the extension of term and yeah, the if, age you limit. Me, if you give me time, because you will, you know. It's I, an, that's why I'm it, sometimes to... I think the leaders are not in consonance with the people. You want to believe that they are as frustrated as you are, and then events sort of show that they are not. Unfortunately, they get the leaders they deserve. You know? As yeah. they say, no army can defeat an idea whose time has come. Yeah. Maybe your idea's time has not Hasn't yet come. come. And throughout history, Many ideas, their time will come. Okay, can, can, can I mm -hmm. just add some messages from our uh, viewers so that you can, when you respond, I give you adequate time to respond. Mm -hmm. um, there is a listener, a, a viewer here who says, No, the panelists are getting it wrong. Bestia represents a struggle, and this sameness and living discussion is a myopic reading of the struggle that he represents. Uh, this uh, person didn't give me their name. Another, Anteja Sima says, Dr. Bestia, you promised us a tsunami, we are still waiting. You deceived the people of Masaka that they were lucky they were going to see him leaving, going. <laughs> to this date, the man has never left. You put on red ribbons and assured us that Article 102B will not be amended. It was amended. What will Tuwalebese do? Nteja Simwe. Another uh, uh, Nuwabine, uh, Nuwabine, I think is in Kabula, he says, if only Ugandans could unravel the forces behind messages and seizing demonstrations and campaigns, they would know that he is doing more of business than politics in those demonstrations. And of course, he is handsomely remunerated by the whites who always use comprador agents like him to change governments in Africa. Uh, I, since you're here, you respond to that yourself. Um, uh, let me also take a few messages from WhatsApp. Uh, uh, someone here says, there is an additional strategy, though, or, uh, yes, or supplements to a grand strategy. Have you considered infiltration of the NRM, sending people <laughs> to run on the NRM ticket, get into parliament and get positions in other, gov in other elective offices, and then use them as part of the civil uprising? Um, uh, he, he, he wants to know. Lincoln Sayuni is in Kisasi, says, the success of any campaign, whether for or against establishments, is hinged around humility of the campaigners. When such humility is either forged or overstepped, the campaign remains an illusion. Um, uh, Joshua is in Ishaka and says, um, Uganda's biggest problem is Besige and Museveni, who think they are the only vision bearers for Uganda. Besige needs to collect his last drop of humility and give away and give way to systems other than constantly 
confronting this his egocentric power uh, solo messiah approach tubale mese is another failed slogan that only gives hope to the delusioned museveni to wachitura kebi to wakabengo uganda to prosperity Joshua Inishaka. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bernard Mpeiwe is in Luwaga. He says, um, Dr. Besige, that we are tired of slogans. Koji Kuteko has not taken off. You are bringing to Balemese. We want Besige to tell us how different mm. is and how he's going to handle the same police. Bernard Mpeiwe adds, uh, as long as you change slogans and you are still handled by the same state operatives, I think you're wasting time and possibly also doing accountability to your foreign funders. Uh, this thing keeps coming up, so I, I hope you'll have opportunity to respond to it now. Um, uh, then um, someone says, uh, oh, this one is the uh, saying the joke, uh, hitting at me and says, he's kulemesad the moderator for a whole 20 minutes. Himself, <laughs> not a this distinction from earlier proclamations. Dr. Bess, you're listening, you're, you're hearing from the viewers, you're hearing from the panelists. I need to yes, and, and that is why I told you that I really need not just 20 minutes. Mm. Because I have to respond to everybody. Nobody <laughs> yes. is making any... I would say I've had two decades. Nobody is <laughs> making so any... have not had less Nobody time. here certainly <laughs> has told us how we can get away from a military dictatorship. They are every very, citizen has they are a telling you to give up. Every, that is the yes, everybody has a responsibility. <laughs> mm -hmm. Produce ideas and produce action. Every citizen. Yeah, you know, you know, Doctor Messi. The question of time is uh, why we have a problem that you keep talking about, which is President Museveni. He keeps asking for more time to accomplish <laughs> and accomplish things. So uh, uh, there are many issues coming to you. You must answer them in the time that we have available. Yes, and then we'll get yeah, out when yes, we need but to. You have to okay. be, you Please go ahead. You have to be fair. That's all. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, as, as I have pointed out, first of all, just to go back to the basics that we have a strategy which is not contested because I have not had anybody bring a different strategy that works. Mm. So you must simply concede that you, nobody has a superior strategy. Two, I have said within that strategy... Does that suggest you have the superior strategy? Your strategy is superior to those? Short of hearing anybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Certainly nobody here. None of those you have read their messages is producing any other strategy mm -hmm apart from the strategy we have talked about. Let people think and bring a, a, a superior strategy. Let them say we, have, we are fed up with the same thing. It is that same thing that works, however long it takes. We went to the bush. We spent five years. The strategy was the same. People's protracted armed struggle. That was the strategy. Even if we spent a hundred years in the bush, it would have remained the strategy. People's armed protracted. Now, under the strategy, there, there mm. are tactics. Mm. And one should differentiate between strategy and tactics. Mm -hmm. Walk to work was a, strate was a tactic under the nonviolent struggle. Mm -hmm. The other uh, campaigns that we have had uh, have been campaigns, and we have had many. And those campaigns continue. They don't have to end. So I have been hearing people say, this campaign started, still going on, you start another one. Even you, where you are, you can start a campaign. And it will be part of the same strategy. The people's uh, uh, non-violent struggle. So it doesn't have to, the, the, the campaigns don't have to come from the same place. The campaigns from the same place don't have to be the same. But the effect, the purpose must be the same. And the purpose is one, to progressively empower citizens and progressively disempower, weaken the dictatorship. That is the eventual objective. Whatever weakens the, the dictator is progress for the struggle. Whatever empowers citizens is progress for... And some people, you know, really, either are totally blind or simply have no capacity to analyze mm. that our people have been progressively getting empowered and stronger and standing up to demand what is theirs. You've seen people close <coughs> roads that are impassable and saying this road you won't pass unless you do something about it. You've seen people in this town close their shops 
all over Uganda and say we have a grievance unless it is solved we are closing the shops and the grievance is immediately solved you've seen you know all these the doctors who are striking all these are people who are empowered who come up and st you know put why is that empowerment not sustained to achieve the ultimate objective that you well, keep talking about. If it did, the struggle would be over. The struggle does not end when it starts. It develops. It can take a long time. Even if you are fighting with guns, some armed struggles have lasted 50 years. Some have lasted more. Mm. It doesn't mean that the struggle is not making progress. It doesn't mean that the struggle will not end. It simply means that you haven't achieved the critical points that are necessary for the struggle to end. And unless you achieve them, or, or unless you develop another strategy, which as I have told you, I haven't had, then you must continue doing the things you need to do to have this strategy work. And as I have told you, there are three things. Conscientization, mm -hmm. wherever you are, make sure that every Ugandan knows that it is his duty. And who's leading this struggle? Maybe, that, maybe that's the, 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 the gap. The, so first of all, let me mm -hmm. tell you that mm -hmm. the struggle like we have today is not a part, cannot be a partisan struggle. Mm. And that's why indeed when you see us, we are from different, uh, different political parties. Mm -hmm. The reason, by the way, uh, we uh, had the setup at Katonga in the manner that you, are, you seem to be uncomfortable with has a history in the election of 2016. There is absolutely no doubt that I defeated Mr. Museveni in the election. Mm -hmm. I have evidence. Mm. And I have, I have said the same in court. Because I don't, don't forget, they have mm. charged me with the treason. Yes. Because I declared myself a winner. I have gone to court and said, yes, I won. Mm. And I declared that I won. Mm. If it is treasonable, give me the opportunity to show you the evidence that I won. So we defeated Mr. Museveni. He overthrew the people's will with the guns. You saw them surrounding my home all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw them grab me and take me to Karamoja and so on. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Museveni lost 2016 elections. He is in office not because of people's will. He is in office because of the way he came there in the first place by using guns to overthrow people's will. Now, having said that, we said the people have empowered us to form a government, and we shall form one. Mm -hmm. And we form the people's government. And the people's government is there. How does that work? Well, Where? You, 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 you should take more time to see how it works. So, the people's government yeah. addressed the conference you okay. we are talking about. Mm. And whether it works or not, the whole week, the, the country is seized <coughs> with what the people's government has, has announced. So, 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 since so, so we came here, here. So, 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 since we came here, the clarification, I think the clarification is important. Be honest, this whole be honest, out of the, the entire campaign, <laughs> I felt like, that that, to be honest, for me, I felt that that was the absolute weakest point. I've, for me, it felt like political theater about saying, you know, we are going to appoint an alternative government. Where? Because you see, the thing is, you, you don't have a real mandate with an alternative government. No, because you don't have resources. You don't yes, have, yes, you yes. cannot do anything. But so why, you, you just figure ahead. Why, why are you it's the whole circus. evening here? You know, I'm sure in TV pays a lot of money to have all these things. The whole evening, all of you people left your homes to come and discuss what the people's government has said. Well, 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 the, but, the, but the, you see, no, I think the, 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 the whole town, because we are interested. The people are only the people's government. I'm sure. I'm sure you saw. I'm sure. I'm sure you saw the people's government deliver food to people who were starving. Who are actually dying? There is a government to is which we pay. Is that sustainable? Is, is that, that it? Okay. Doesn't matter whether it is sustainable is or not. Also, I think even your strategy until, until of, of the people uprising 
is not sustainable. Okay. You see, you we need, actually you saw need it in to Egypt. educate yourself. No, no, we saw it in Egypt. You need, you need where to... the people were overthrown Even by the army. Even Tunisia right now. You see, After they had risen. Oh, so you are likely to go in the same cycle there, here. There are, there are reasons for why everything happens. We have seen and it in Zimbabwe where the army has taken power. And in Zimbabwe, the opposition... Every politician is different. I'm being told we need to take a break. Yes, but you haven't answered all these questions. We need more time. The clock is running. The clock is running. So, why, so why, why do you ask the questions if you don't want me to ask? Do, Dr. Bessage, you're surely going to Because I have, try to answer one, yes. then you know, everybody comes. Dr. Bessage, you're, you're surely going we to We are have teaching to. you not to get time extensions. When you get <laughs> you, you don't have to no, summarize but, your answers, your responses. But summarize to be able them, to answer. There, there are many. Yes, there are many. You know? uh, even if we gave you five years in government, you, uh, there are many issues that you would have to deal with and, and, and wouldn't. Um, you, I don't think you would have advocated. So how much time do I have so that I know? Uh -huh. How to summarize? It, all of us, the four of us here, and our listeners and our viewers are going to use the one and a half hours that we have for this show. We're not going to extend that. Um, yes. uh, to contextualize, um, uh, the question of people's governments and other governments. Yes. Um, <coughs> governments, is, uh, I mean, uh, struggle movements mm. can have governments that are not in power. Uh, I think Tibet has been maintaining a government in exile. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, 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 the Palestinian Authority maintained a government in somewhere else. Even when so we were I, in the I, bush, I, we had a government yeah, here. Yeah, I, I, there I, I was a government here, I, I, we I had a government here. Really really but a just a quick question before you take a break. Dr. Bessie, you said that President Museveni, you won the election in 2016. Mm. Yes. Does that speak the same to the election of 2011, 2006, and 2001? Where I Can have... The answer be consistent. I, 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 I have views on all those mm -hmm. but i think it would be diversionary to go into all those when we are dealing with the latest one which is most effective because even if i say i won 2011 when there was another one in 2016 it does not make sense mm. the operative one now is 2016. 2016 he is not in office now because he won 2011 he's in office because he won 2016 and it is that contest okay. that we J have just another another quick one um, um you said the struggle cannot be tied to time but the principal challenge you're putting is against your Museveni and the National Resistance Movement. And every time your struggle delays, they extend their stay in power. So he's now counting this month. In a few, in a few days, it will be 32 years in power. So and what is the with, the amendment, with the amendment of the Constitution, there is every likelihood that either he will have an election in 2023 you see, you see or stay that, on longer that. That question is, is, is redundant. Mm. People who take over power by guns do not live on their own. So unless Museveni is pushed out by struggle, he will stay until his grand, grand, grandson. And, and, and that's exactly what makes my question not redundant, yeah. is that you started pushing, but he's not leaving. So how long will this push go on, or will, will other factors natural causes and others First of all, sort I have of the told issue you, before you I have told you to, so. that this is not a basic push cannot be will not be it's a uganda's push as long as and i think onapito is quite right as long as ugandans have not organized themselves well enough to push him out he will stay and all we are doing is simply playing whatever humble role we can to assist that process. And, and someone will ask. But as long as there are no competencies to push him out, he won't go because 26 has come or 28 has come or 29 and, 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 has come. And, and he someone, won't go. Yes, and someone will ask you the Look question. Look at Kabira. Yes. Kabira, when, Kabira in Congo. His time ended a long time ago. What is this happening now? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and so it's not ask, about... Some, so, some, someone will ask you a question. Are you reading from the same script as those Ugandans? They can rise up when their day-to-day -day living is threatened, they will retreat. Are you reading from the same script? Of course. You know, I, and, and you, you know, I get, you know, sometimes rather uh, concerned about asking the same thing in different ways. Mm -hmm. You see, when Museveni started the struggle in Ruero, there were some 30 people in a very small area. The reason he won is not because of the 30 people. The other people did not play a role until at very different times and in very different ways. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't mean that they were not on the same script. So Ugandans, I can say without any fear of contradiction, that the greatest majority of Ugandans want change. The greatest majority of Ugandans are in a terrible situation. And I, I, I worry when some people say they are not bad off enough yet. They are. They, I've told you they have been dying of hunger, being buried of hunger. You know, people who die every day, who can't access malaria treatment, you know, basic things, you know, people. The people are in terrible, terrible condition and will do anything. You saw what happened here in 2009 indeed. Was it us? who spurred people to take action in 2009. No, on their own. They took over police stations, took over everything. They are the same people you yes, meet and, on the, and, and, and on the streets. Had put a so so the, the reason it's taking long, as I have said previously, mm -hmm. is simply because we, the elite, have betrayed the country. We have not provided the leadership that the people would benefit from to make this come to a head as quickly as possible. Because Let's take a break. Some... Let's take a break. We'll pick it up oh. after a very short commercial break. You're welcome to this last segment of the fourth estate. There are many issues to respond to. There are many people calling. The phone line has been uh, um, uh, ringing off the hook in, uh, in the production studio, but we don't even have time to uh, pick it as yet. And let me, let me ask uh, you, Dr. Bessiger and the panelists, that we ignore the... Trump comments for now and continue with uh, things that affect more Ugandans. With the people's we, government. We, we, yeah, we, we, we continue with the people's government. No, actually, <laughs> we're, we're yes, with the people's indeed. president. Um, Uganda cringe uh, with the Chipolopolo of uh, Zambia. 1-1 uh, so far. Oh, uh, really? Yes, uh, speaking 1-1 one, one so far. Uh, I will, we'll give you the details, uh, the detailed updates. So um, uh, we keep praying for the cranes to triumph yes. over this uh, Chan uh, challenge. Uh, someone here says, uh, he says, we Ugandans need to be, uh, it's a very long message uh, from Anthony, he's in the USA. He says, um, I think the doctor didn't hear or just ignore the idea of infiltration because he has no one that sent in a message provided any ideas. Yes, someone else had sent a message about you doing uh, infiltration. Um, seven used infiltration with the opposition and with all other institutions. So why don't they employ it against him too? It's not easy, but it's doable. We Ugandans need to be realistic. It's not easy to oppose a president like Museven. At the moment, Mr. Besje is losing a PR battle. This is why some people think he has been here too long or that he is too ubiquitous. In his defense, Besje is not the leader of the opposition in all African countries where leaders are despotic. These leaders are not easy to dislodge. It's not easy in practice, and Dr. Besje or opposing leaders, for that matter, cannot do it alone. Therefore, he is right. It's the people that must push for the change that they want. Another listener, uh, another viewer here, I think Bernard Ampere says, um, yeah, that you should change strategy and lobby foreign leaders, for example, to cut aid. <laughs> Mobilizing Ugandans to Kubala Mesa may not work. Uh, so take the campaign beyond Uganda's borders. Um, uh, another listener here, I think it's Frank Gashumba, who says, um, it's not only, it's only Dr. Kiza Besje who has kept the candle burning. From 2001 elections to 2016, some of the following people contested for presidency. Kivirige Mayanja, Agra Wari, Chapa Karhanga, Wazarahi Buenje, Senku Bugesiasa, Mario Bote, Mirio Bote, Abed Wanika, Lovega Mukwaku, Betty Kamia, Injinia Mavirizi, um, Geno Benon Veraro, Professor Venances Varia Mreba, Norbert Mao, John Patrick Amama Mbabazi. Where are they? Is a big question. Where have they disappeared to? And why should Besje be hanged alone for, for not delivering the change that people claim? And then someone else called and said, um, was asking the question, is this Tuvale Mese a personal strategy or a strategy of the FDC? If it is a strategy of the FDC, why aren't you letting the leadership of the FDC take it as an institution instead of you taking the lead as Dr. Kiza Besje? Well, again, the same kind of questions that keep on coming. First of all, maybe I should again refocus what we are refocus on what we are trying to do. It's erroneous, really, mis misnomalous, misleading to think that the struggle is between opposition and the government. The struggle is would be between opposition and the government if it was about government policies. 
and uh, you know how to do UPE better and how to organize health better. The fundamental struggle we are engaged in, as I have pointed out, and of course you are free to agree or disagree, is simply whether we have a country or whether our country is hostage. If the country is hostage, you can't start talking about how it should be organized because it's not within your power to do so. The struggle we are in is a struggle to regain our country. And this is not just from Museveni, it is from the time it was taken over by the British guns, which created even Uganda as an entity. We did not, Ugandans did not create it. And that's why, however, the guns will be put under the feet of Ugandans. Whenever it happens, however it happens, mm -hmm. what must follow is reorganizing the country. We must have a genuine constitutional conference. Mr. Mulika, OHT Mulika has been talking about this. Uganda was forcefully formed. It was not the will for formation, I mean engagement of Ugandans. And as I have told you, since then, constitutions have been the pocket constitutions of whoever, whoever is leading and amending them according to their will. So the first thing we must now willfully, having regained control of our country, we must willfully engage on how we live together and manage the country. How, what level of decentralization, for example, that is becoming a very critical question. You've heard people talking about uh, Republic of the Nile, Republic of Kawempe, Republic of Yira, Republic of whatever. These are real issues. We must, you know, sit uh, and engage <clears throat> on how we rebuild this country. So a constitutional engagement we, we must follow. Mm -hmm. Following that, we must, arising out of the constitution, rebuild state institutions as dictated by the constitution. If we are, for example, in a federal kind of arrangement, there must be a federal institution, there must be state institution, there must be whatever. But even the existing institutions like police, military, whatever, they are now institutions of those who have power. Institutions serve those who have power. As long as people have no power, institutions don't serve them. So we have a judiciary that does not serve people. We have a police that does not serve people. We have a military that... We have then to rebuild institutions to become institutions of the people. They cannot be unless people have power. We then must heal the wounds through a truth-telling. How have we killed each other all this time? You know, all the death that has happened in Ruero, in northern Uganda, in eastern Uganda, in Kasese, wherever, all these are wounds that will keep on festering unless we actually deal with them. And we must consciously deal with them at, at some time after regaining the country. And lastly, we would have free and fair elections. So, please, those of us who are engaging on this side are not engaging as opposition. We are engaging as citizens, seeking to regain control of our country. In <coughs> fact, as all of you may remember, no, as all of you may remember, mm -hmm. I voluntarily stepped down from the leadership of FDC because it was actually getting in the way I was engaging, because it was limiting me as a political, you know, uh, operator in a political party. Yes, I sorry. don't think that this is the time for it. They have a role, political parties have a role, but this is not the time for political parties. So, the engagement, and, <clears throat> and people who keep on saying you, the opposition, actually, tactically use it to hide their non-engagement with the freeing of the country they call theirs. They, this is not an opposition thing, this is a citizen thing that everyone, including you in the media, including wherever you are, to the, at whatever station, whether you are in the police, whether you want, if you want Uganda to be in our hands and to serve us equitably, with us having equal influence, then you must engage. In the, and that's why when we say Kubale Mesa, is we are not talking about the people in the opposition, mm -hmm. Kule Mesa Valimu government. No. Even those people who are serving within the government institutions must play their role Kule Mesa those who are holding the country mm. hostage. Whether you are in the police, whether you are in the army, whether you are in the, yeah, the civil yeah, service, yeah, whether you are in the president's service. We need to clarify, service, need you, else, you you, clarify. How, how, how do they claim it, sir? Oh, yes. The, the, you can, 
do things that make it difficult for the regime to keep holding on to power. And like are, things. Like? Let's be specific. There, 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 there are many things. I mean, uh, uh, for example, you know, if uh, you are in the, 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 the police, you are being deployed to go and stop people communicating, you, you can uh, creatively uh, not do what? You've been instructed to do. Yes. Mm. And this happened, you see, this struggle, as I have told you, we are not inventing the wheel. These struggles have happened all over the world. And people who have, you know, done, even, even now, <clears throat> what happened eventually, in the, and what will happen even here, mm -hmm. what will happen here is that the people who are in the security will link up with the population and say, no, 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 this is no longer. And then, and then your illusion, <laughs> utopian government, where the military will be controlled. It's that not, is an illusion. It's not even an illusion. Let me tell you, you are, if you had won elections, you would take control of the army and use it the same way your were seven is used it. I could, so, I could, <laughs> you see, you see, I could, hmm? as long as people hmm? have not gained the competencies Kulemesa, anybody who does not act in accordance with their will. Don't you think you, you, you if if the if the military and whoever is holding the state realizes that this cannot go on, people have simply tightened everything. We because tell me if tomorrow all these people who are all over the country stopped bringing food to this town, and it's possible they can, can they? do it. Yes, they can. All it takes is just a little organization. Mm -hmm. They can stop food from coming to Kampala. But at okay. what all cost those, to them? I, I, I'm afraid we need to, to you, indicate you, our, our, you, view, our, our viewers. Because from calling... 7 to come to power, it cost 500 dead bodies. They are still piled up there. You will never get change without any pain. Of course. And so uh, if they think, that if anybody and, thinks and that, Bessie, you, you as, know, as, as, as you, because you are not selling your matoke this. for a week, mm. as, as we you, you, ca you cannot afford to do that is, in order to get the change you need. Then you will stay, Bessie, for as long as you have that feeling, the, the, the you will stay where is, you are. You, you articulate very fundamental issues and uh, your, your analysis of what needs to be done is spot on. The question is, you and Museveni sold exactly the same narrative <laughs> 37 years ago. It is not. And just a moment. And the reason the going to the bush option has been off the cards is that Ugandans say this is what we are sold, this is how we are shortchanged. Mm. So we cannot go back the yes, same way. And but I'm I, afraid you're, you're I, not going to no, respond no, no, to no, that. No, 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 no. I must respond because that is the very fundamental thing. Yes. I told you at the beginning of this that the, what we sold to Ugandans then. Mm -hmm was that we would fight, win the war, and hand over power to them. And that, you didn't. That we have seen failed. may not happen. Yes. Because it would depend entirely on the willful action of those who have power. You, you, you promised to fight. Surrendering it. You promised to fight, win power, hand it over to Ugandans. You what promised, we are promising. You promised, you promised to heal wounds that remain unhealed. Mm. You promised to create a fundamental change yes, in the just, economy. Just listen. It hasn't just happened. just yes. listen. The reason it hasn't happened is because that process, as we have learned, painfully, some of us, mm -hmm. because don't forget it was ex an ex a very extremely painful process. What we have learned mm. through that pain is that it still empowers the few who hold guns. And the reason we have deliberately opted not to take up guns, because we could, Dr. And, and, and we could overthrow yes, this that, regime, that, that but, exactly. but overthrowing it. So what this will avoid mm -hmm. is having people say, where were you no, and, when and, we and, were and, fighting? And that's exactly the question. Which is what you have been saying, and, where were you? Yes, you were under the beds. When everybody has done that's something, exactly, that, exactly when everybody has done something, except of course the Onapitos <laughs> who are just commentators, <laughs> when everybody has done something, you won't tell them where were you. They, they will Thank know you. that they... Now you are isolated. No, that's exactly the same question that's still there. When you announced to Valemese, when you announced to Valemese, it was the people's government. Yes. Led by the people's president, yes. Dr. Kiza Besige, yes. and his cabinet. Yes. How do you convince the doubting Thomases, mm. especially among the elite mm. because and the rural masses, that you will not do exactly the same? Because we have no tools to do it. No, but you, see, you do. Will no, no. You can call a press conference <laughs> no. and address that press conference, and they will take you 
the other people are still outside. There's still a smaller you group. See, you see, let me tell you what immunizes future generations against dictators. Mm -hmm. When people see that with their own organization and numbers, they have failed those with the guns to do what they want. Nobody wielding any kind of force will dictate what will happen in their country. al -Sis is doing that in Egypt. That we, but he, you yes. know that that revolution aborted. Yes. yes. So what would stop a Ghanaian revolution from aborting? No, understand. Mm. The, what, <clears throat> you see, what uh, 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 happened, and this is why I say that every polity, the problem is you have very little time I could analyze for you what happened in, in, in Egypt. Because it was not a CC that, that actually overthrew. Don't forget that people came back on the streets. Yes. And actually demanded that the, 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 the military come, come in. Yeah. So uh, they, there was a different dynamic mm -hmm. which you must what is the Ugandan contend dynamic? with. Yeah. But even in that dynamic mm. where now they isolated the, the Islamists uh, who were the, the Islamic Muslim Brotherhood. brotherhood. The, the Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood, rather. Uh, even, even there, you know, now in Egypt, El Sisi, even with all the weapons he has, he knows that people can actually fail. Okay, let me take some callers. Uh, yes, uh, otherwise people because might... they, they failed They failed them. I, 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 I don't want my <clears throat> viewers to fail me, so let me allow them because this is their show. Hello, do you have a caller? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Montinda. Your name, sir? I'm John. John, keep your question or comment brief, please. I'm resp responding to Dr. VSJ. Yes, go ahead. I would suggest to myself that uh, Dr. VSJ himself is a dictator. <laughs> because Dr. VSJ left the leadership of FDC a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But as we speak up to now, he shadows the current <laughs> president of FDC, mm. and he is actually acting as the president of FDC. Uh, John, where have you seen a dictator who's a shadow at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Dr. Where, where do he is acting as a dictator. Okay. He's dictating all over mm -hmm. <laughs> the activities of FDC right now. <clears throat> Yes, but my question is... I say Dr. FJ has shadowed mm -hmm. the current president of FDC. Mm. He has taken over the powers of the president of FDC. Mm. Look at the example. During the announcement of Tuvalu Messi, mm. who was supposed to announce that? Was it Dr. FJ or the spokesperson of FDC mm. or the current president of FDC? Why didn't when the president they, when they were campaigning even in Nambori, yes. we saw a president aspiring to be the president of FDC saying, my political mentor is Dr. VCG. So? Two. Okay. Mm. When you look at the, the, the MOPs of FDC, mm. they no longer participate with Dr. VCG in this sabotage of government activities look like I'm never seeing him mm -hmm. lonely with the, our mayor Lukwago trying to say this will not happen and later on it happens. Okay. <laughs> so okay. Do, Dr. Mister will respond to you. <clears throat> uh, thank you John. I have many callers online so I, I think you make your point. Dr. Mister will respond to you. Hello? If you will have Hello. the time. Mm. Hello? Mm. Hello. Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm Robert calling from Yumbe. Yes, Robert. Keep your question or comment brief. Yeah, I think Dr. Best is a dictator indeed. Uh, because uh, as you see, when he left FDC from Naja Nankumbi, he put other headquarters as Katonga. Mm -hmm. And he pulls all the activities uh, of the opposition to Katonga, making Naja Nankumbi office irrelevant. Mm. So to me, leaving FDC uh, leadership was a, was a tactical withdraw, but he still wanted to struggle because he wants uh, himself to be the only face behind the opposition. Mm -hmm. And 
to be sure he will be on the ballot as many times as M7 himself. So he has no difference with the M7 because the dictator, they are all the same. Uh, right uh, now, we call him. Uh, Robert, you're, you're not asking a question, you're making a comment, just like John did. Which has already yes. been made. And, 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 and the question someone would ask you is uh, why do those this. elected leaders of FDC not take up their position or climb their, their, their place? Does it have to be someone? We have another call. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Your name, sir? I'm calling from Entebbe. Yes, your name, sir? I'm calling from Entebbe. Yes, your name? Yes, I'm called uh, John. John, yes? I'm asking, why did that gentleman announce his uh, to the minister after taking his son outside? Okay. I, I think he'll answer that himself. He's best position to answer that question. Uh, hello? Do we have another caller? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Muyenga. Muyenga, your name, sir? Hello? I'm called Tuyami Siraj. Siraj, yes? And I would really love to ask uh, Dr. Besige. Mm. Like, uh, why why do they really take the situation of flip-flopping mm. and look at us as we are the subject that they are not really working on? Mm. That's it. Mm. I, I think you have your TV on because you can hear Neko. Hello, we have another caller. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I'm called Mr. Chinji. Chinji, yes. Calling from uh, Kampala. From Kampala? Yes, please. Yes, go yes. ahead. I'm calling from Kampala, I'm calling Mr. Chinji. Yes, please, go ahead. You, you have your TV on, please turn it down. Turn down the volume on your TV set. You're giving us an echo. Yes, Mr. Chinji? I'm calling from Kampala, I'm calling Mr. Chinji. Chinji, still on TV. Hello? 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 When you're calling us, please turn down the volume on your TV set. You don't have to listen to yourself making the call speak to us hello I, I i think we have very little time so let's come back to studio and uh dr Bessie, you've had some of these uh calls well, and the many things that you still have to respond to yes <coughs> uh, first of all as i have pointed out this is not a time really for partisan uh activity because there is no freedom Parties have a role within the meaning of what I talked about. Educating the people so that people get conscientized. Organizing people so that they are able to act together. Taking actions that whatever actions are there to, uh, you know, cripple the regime and to strengthen what they are doing. Parties have that role, not, not the fundamental role of poli political parties in a democracy have two main roles. The first one is articulating a program for development of the country, you know, a, 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 a political platform, as you may call it, and influencing the country to support that platform. So the first one is formation of political will within the population. The second one is developing leaders to offer leadership in implementing that. These are the two main functions of political parties. But those functions only actually happen when the country is in the hands of the people that, so that people can give them power. The whole idea of campaigning is so that people give you power to implement what you want to implement. Even in the last election, I was telling people all over the country that you presently have no power to give you. 
the power is somewhere else. I am calling upon you to work together so that we reclaim that power first, have a transition that I have talked about, and then we can have free and fair elections when there is freedom to organize and to popularize, you know, which agenda is best for the country. So, my not being in FDC <clears throat> does not stop people who are in FDC to do that. In any case, I have never been in DP. I have never been in UPC. I have never been in JEMA. I have never been, there are many parties which are there. So what is stopping those parties from, you know, gaining and doing what they need to do to take over power? Are they also being crippled by Besige? No. So the thing is that the crippling effect of political parties is the same. The fact that they don't have space to function. So that's why in the people's government which we have, it's not a partisan platform. And that's why indeed you saw not only the FDC president, but we had people from DP and DPMPs and uh, FDC MPs and uh, we had Jema, we have Ken Ruchamzi, CP, they were all there. So we work together for change and the change being reclaiming the country. We are not at a stage of looking for a leader, for heaven's sake. A leader is looked for to lead the country. We don't have the country. So that's why the struggle now is a liberation struggle. And, you know, many people keep on causing confusion because they don't want uh, that to be clear. Because we are, we are not working in a, in a vacuum, the regime is investing huge amounts of resources mm -hmm. to undertake propaganda, to scuttle what we are doing. And part of that propaganda, indeed, is what you keep on hearing. Besige is the problem. Even they themselves actually say Besige is the same as Museveni. Even if you move from Museveni, you'll come to Besige, there will be no change. They are the same. As if the struggle now is for Museveni or Besige. The struggle is for Uganda. There is no country in our hands. Now, on the question of, uh, uh, you know, leaders who join or do not join. This is a free uh, engagement. You know, we have many MPs who are there as we launched to the uh, from different political parties, they were there. It's their willful act. You've seen MPs who have, even at some times, being uh, from the struggle, supporting those who are in the government. Uh, that I cannot answer for them. The population will have to answer for them. Mm. Uh, now, the, and, and it's part of that propaganda that you hear. Besige is calling you to suffer when his son is abroad. There was somebody asking, mm. I took my son abroad. In yes, John, my, son is, my son is in college in the U.S. My son is an adult. He will choose when he wants to come to the struggle. I don't have to force him to come to the struggle so that I have legitimacy for struggling myself. When I went to the bush in Ruero, I did not have any son. I, took, I went myself, and if I died, I would have died alone. So my struggle can, should not be linked. When Museveni was in the bush in Ruero, his, all his children were in Sweden. That did not stop the struggle in Ruero going on and being one when Museveni's children were in Sweden. We don't expect children to be the ones to fight. But those who want to fight, even here, you know, if you are a child and you, 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 if you have children and you want them to be in the struggle, that is your business. I don't come to say, send your children to struggle. Whoever wants to struggle simply comes forward and struggles. Now, the question of uh, 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 whether uh, we have uh, systems, I heard somebody talking mm -hmm. about institutions, it, you know, I, I am against uh, institutions uh, and actually the contrary because this struggle as we have pointed out cannot be a struggle to get a leader it is primarily a struggle to get qualitative change in terms of where the power lies 
the change of guards will remain as long as power remains within a few people. Even if it is Besige who actually took over power in the current circumstances, there would be no fundamental change. You would do the same. It, they, there would be nothing to compare me to, be, to do different. Okay. The, yes, there would be nothing, there would be nothing within and, uh, the population. The population must have capacity to compel leaders to do what they want. And that is what is lacking. Until we achieve that, leaders can do what they want. Okay, I'm afraid so we got to bring the short one in. Our time, our time, our time is really... Run for another uh, uh, election uh, uh, under this system, which would not necessarily... It, Ona, I think that question may not be answered because uh, our time is out. We need to no, get no, out but of we need Are to we wind up? It, it's coming to midnight. <laughs> yeah, it's, so not, it's coming to midnight. We, need, we, need, we have we been listening to the I'm doctor. afraid we need to <laughs> finish this. Let me read some more messages from no, some of our viewers. For what purpose are you going to read those messages? If we cannot respond to them. People are viewing... Yes. They have sent their messages. Yes, but unless we're able to respond to them, yes. then they remain Dr. simply... Dr. Besseje, we have extended the time for yes. the show. And you but precisely, really you said we shall do everything within the one and a half hours. Yes. So if the time is over, let's go. <laughs> Otherwise, if you read the messages, give us time and we respond to them. That's a good one. Can, can you summarize and uh, <laughs> we get out of here? Yes, I think the... the uh, you, you want me to start because I think we it's, it's only fair. Give I, our comments. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think just <laughs> yes. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to read some of these messages. So I, I'll still read them. And we um, shall uh, answer. Uh, Joram, Joram <laughs> if, if there is a question, you'll answer the question. If there is a comment, we'll not have to respond to it. Really? Joram Bintamanya says, "What's wrong with people? Should Besige hide? They will say Museven has given him money. Mm. But Oro say Otagchub Otagjochia, girete here. Don't uh, cook it. Don't, don't cook it. Don't roast it." But deliver it ready. Yeah. Um, another listener here says, Dr. Vesti has played his role. It's up to Ugandans <coughs> to wake up. The challenge is Museveni has a big budget to bribe whoever tries to rise. This one doesn't give me uh, their name. Um, um, another viewer says, uh, Dr. Vesti, our president, has clearly stated his campaign, or move against, or move, ain't based on parties. So it's time for us Ugandans to wake up and stop all blame games to defeat Museveni. Besige is not the same as Museveni. We have a visionary Ugandan and a visionary swindler. These are the words of uh, some uh, viewer here. Another viewer says, um, Elites want an invitation card and Uber fees to join the struggle. <laughs> like inviting your father-in-law to your wedding. It's you who provides transport after the invitation. Guys like Muntu and Imbabazi with a false equivalence campaign, they seem like alternatives who require affirmative action to match Besige. It seems like that. Uh, this is another opinion from one of our viewers. And David Karamagi says, um, Mr. Besige, the other strategy is to wait. Let nature take its course. David, and he's somewhere in Kisasi. And then the last message I read uh, uh, says, at first I did not understand he's a Besige, but over time I, I have started to get his position. My prayer and advice to him is that let him try to talk to his opposition leaders like Mao, Buanika, Otun, and others, such that they come up with one force to mobilize the entire country, otherwise Museveni is not a walkover. So, these messages don't need you to respond to them. Can we start with the conclusion? Um, <coughs> uh, Robbie, you're free to either comment on uh, President Trump or comment on this discussion we've been having, and we'll get out of here in the next three minutes. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Um, with the Trump thing, I think it, it goes back to this whole thing about venting. America's going through a lot of their own problems, and uh, last week's uh, Fire and Fury, he didn't want anyone to talk about that book or anything anymore. So anything that had to criticize what he's doing or how he was doing it, he just had to get the topic off discussion and get them off course and the media would follow through. Um, for Africans, in terms of our story and what we have to say and what we have to do, I think it's incumbent upon us to know that even America and other, pe and other places have their problems, even when their presidents change. You have issues, for example, in, in the UK with the national health security, uh, with the national um, health, and then you have uh, uh, all sorts of immigration issues. But Uganda can also have uh, answers for itself and can play a bigger role if you look at what we've done with the <coughs> refugees here. So if we either part of the problem or part of the solution, and for um, Dr. J, I think what Ugandans are looking for are strategies, whether the 
they are part of those strategies or whether they're formulated by strategies, but if something is going to move, there's got to be a plan. Minus a plan, it's just another act on the stage. Look, Thank you. <coughs> just for me, I think the, 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 the opposition has to appreciate that the country's future may not take the trajectory they, th they think. The idea that there is no country may not be entirely true. There is a country. And there are people who are holding the country, you may call it hostage, are fairly well organized. And they may be and have a very good chance at perpetuating the system as we know it and it will become the defining nature of this country mm -hmm. with or without Yoweri Museveni. So it may not necessarily have to say it has to dismantle and take the people, the core state run by the armed forces is likely to continue being the state which allow for many years, or even centuries to come. Thank you. Leah? <coughs> um, I think uh, for me in conclusion, first of all, I just need to let the record reflect that these criticisms come from a, a good place <laughs> mm -hmm. and that I really, really want the opposition to succeed because I too am tired of this government. Um, but uh, perhaps, and uh, Dr. Bessiger said that we're not offering any alternatives and perhaps this might not be part of the strategy, maybe it's something that they're thinking about down the line, but I would have been happy to hear about it already, about what they're going to do to take over the 317 MP seats, the people, because you know they said these MPs need to be shunned, they need to be punished. Uh, but what is the opposition going to do to make sure that you know they're viable candidates? We don't have to wait until okay. 2021 or however, when, mm -hmm. I don't know when the next election will be now that things are changing. Uh, but I'd be very, very excited if there is now a very concerted effort to mentor, to groom the new set of leaders that will be able to, to challenge um, the current incumbents. Okay. Someone might say you're waiting for an invitation, uh, like, 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 like uh, one of the viewers uh, sent a message. <laughs> and Uber, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bessinger, you're closing. Yeah, yeah first of all, to say that, um, you know, <coughs> what is happening, the despondency, the know kind of uh, feeling of dejection that uh, you sense from from Mr. Napito's talk that you know this is likely to continue for very many years there is, it may not change I am familiar with this kind of feeling and sense it is actually the common feeling of the great darkness before dawn and that is what normally happens. Just before dawn, it becomes very dark. And some people who are easy to give up say it will never happen. We had the same sense even when we were fighting in the last war. You know, an offensive that went on for a long time broke us down because people have been suffering, have lost their properties, have been in jails, have been what. And it comes to a time when they feel that maybe this thing is not possible. But that is when it is about to happen because the regime that we are dealing with that is holding Ugandans hostage has never been weaker than it is today. The security forces, and this is the point I made in that uh, press statement, the security forces that they rely on to hold power are themselves dysfunctional now in a very large measure. And I had them warning me. You cannot warn me about talking <laughs> on my forces. <laughs> These are my forces. I pay salaries <laughs> to keep them, you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 they are our children. They are our brothers. You cannot mm -hmm. intimidate me. Don't talk about them. We shall talk about it because they are, they, they are, the, the military and the, 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 you know, the security institutions have mm -hmm. suffered even more than, than the rest of us. They, they are hostages within the hostage, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and so. Then look at the economy. The economy for whatever you want to do has collapsed. And it has collapsed because for the last 32 years, they are investing in regime protection rather than people protection. So people have become very weak. They cannot produce. They cannot pay taxes. The tax base is, is very shaky. I've been hearing Mr. Seven saying I found 44 billion as was the tax being collected. Now we have trillions. You may have trillions today, but you are failing to pay salaries, you know? You are failing to pay doctors. You are failing to pay uh, judicial officers. You are failing, and 
you know, uh, even to buy the, mm. the, the constitution change was a problem. They had to trade in, in kind. Say, we are giving you two years instead of the money they were asking for. The councillors the other day who went to Kisos were given a cow each because there is no money to give them. So we have an economy that has that is but on its trade. that is on its <laughs> knees. Yes, yes, that's why it's, it it's like anyway, it's like in Mobutu's days. <laughs> Mobutu in his last days was signing a personal check to pay his guards. You know that's that's about where we are because everybody has been incapacitated, has been weakened, and so once you have. A situation like this, once the economy has collapsed, once popular legitimacy has collapsed completely, which you saw in the Toji Kwata Co. Some people said Toji Kwata Co. was not a success. Toji Kwata Co. was a huge success okay. because the whole country, for the first time, I've not seen it as united as it, as it was. Even in the parliament, to find that many NRM MPs stood up and said no, yes. not, not on, of, of our dead bodies. This the, was the, the a Dr. huge success. So, so the strategy is clear, and I have said it's not contested so far. That we continue. Let's not waver with a non-violent struggle. What others were raising are tactics. Whether we infiltrate NRM in this non-violent struggle, that is a tactic. It's not a strategy. Whether the the foreigners help us in um, you know stifling some of the things, that is a tactic. It's not a strategy. The strategy okay. remains one non-violent struggle you. and Thank it you. involves all ugandans over to you it's not just me over to you over to all of you who are here <laughs> you and you me that and I'm you. A commentator. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice week thank you, thank very, thank you very much, much. <laughs> dr kiza bestie for making time for the show thank you very much leah thank you very much Kona. thank you very much robbie thank Thanks you very much to you all our viewers trails. for joining us tonight and always and especially those who gave us feedback and each one who watched this show thank you very much especially to our production team They've been telling me we've overshot extremely more than mm. we do, and so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm having to release yeah, all you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at midnight um, uh, to leave. I just haven't been able to check. Production, can you help? What is the score for the Uganda Cranes and Chipolo Polo? Pardon? Ah, um, uh, Zambia has taken the lead. It's two and Uganda one uh, at the moment. How many minutes do we have to go? About 20 minutes, so they still hope that maybe the Uganda Cranes uh, can uh, survive. Of, um, uh, uh, like Man City was trying to push back against Liverpool earlier uh, today. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, to you all, and thank you very much um, for me. It's a good night.